Typically, I play a lot of fast-paced action games, either in the form of action RPGs, MOBAs, or MMO PvP, but sometimes I just want to sit back and play something a bit more relaxing. So when Ubisoft reached out to me about doing a sponsored video for their upcoming city builder Anno 1800, I decided to give the game a try, and holy fuck, this is one of the most addictive and satisfying real-time city building simulations I've ever played. I enjoyed this game so much that I sunk 15 hours into it over the course of two days and accumulated 10 hours of footage to edit through for this video. It's four hours in a row. Time to stretch your legs. Starting out the game appears to be rather simple, you have your own island that you slowly build up by adding houses for residents, a marketplace to keep them happy, a lumberjack hut and sawmill to get wood and process them into planks to build more buildings, as well as roads to connect everything together. But as you progress further by reaching certain goals, the game really starts to open up and eventually it takes a lot of thought to plan everything out. On top of this, each map is also inhabited by multiple NPCs that are expanding their own empires and as you take control of your boat to discover new land, you'll meet these characters and form a relationship with them either by doing quests to earn their favour to unlock alliances and trade, or by attacking them to take over their land by force. One of the main elements of progression in Anno is through your workforce. When you start out you only have access to farmers, but as you fulfil their needs and attract enough of them, you can upgrade farmers residents to workers residents, which then also gives you access to a whole new tier of buildings and farmable resources. Sources. To progress past that, you'll then need to fulfil all of your workers' needs, which are a lot more demanding than what the farmers require. Each island in Anno also has their own farmable resources and fertility, and at this stage will most likely require that you sail out on your boat and inhabit a new island to then charter the newly required goods back to your original island, so you can then fulfil your workers' needs and progress towards upgrading them further to stage 3, which is the artisan workforce. Progressing through each of the workers tiers seems to take exponentially longer than the previous as you need to reach a certain population for unlocks to meet the worker needs, which then puts more demand on the food supply and in turn requires more farmers and workers. The way I dealt with this was I essentially split my island up into two or three districts. One area I dedicated to farmers, another for workers, and the city centre I populated with artisans as they were the most needy and wanted to be in range of more public buildings. Other than doing quests, discovering new islands, and relationship building with NPCs, there's also two other features that help break up the gameplay of Anno. The first being the ability to influence the moods and habits of your population by editing newspaper stories which will have a buff or debuff effect depending on the stories that go out. If you're doing a really shitty job and everyone's miserable, you can just go full censorship mode and change the stories to make it seem like everything's fine. Censorship is not always the cranny of the corrupt. This will have effects such as people paying more taxes, people consuming less, or decreasing the chance of a riot happening. Oh yeah, that's another thing, if you don't meet the needs of your people, they'll storm the streets and destroy buildings. You then need to build a police station to get them under control, and probably a fire station to put the fires out. Another big feature you need to manage in Anno 1800 is something called Expeditions. This is something that you get access to around the point where you're progressing from a Tier 2 to Tier 3 workforce. When the opportunity for an expedition pops up, you can assign a ship to go out and try to return safely. Your first expedition is core to progression in this game, as it unlocks an entire new continent known as the New World, which has the necessary resources needed to fulfil the needs of your artisans in the Old World. When you change from one continent to the other, your progress on the other continent is still simulated. Riots can still occur, fires can break out, and the economy is still running, which makes the game start to feel really challenging eventually. During my time playing Anno, I eventually progressed to the point where I colonised five islands in the Old World and four islands in the New World. On each continent I had one main island which housed the bulk of my skilled workers, and the other islands I just used for farming different resources. I then set up a bunch of trade and charter routes between the farming islands and my main islands, and finally trade routes between both of my main islands on each continent. Setting all of this stuff up took a lot of management but felt incredibly rewarding when everything was working out. Aside from discovering a new continent, expeditions also reward
reward you with supplies, items, influential people and zoo exhibits. During an expedition you'll receive a pop-up from your captain asking for you to make certain decisions that will dictate the success of the expedition. The success chance of these decisions is increased based on the items or sailors you've got equipped in your ships. I think the main reason I found Anno 1800 so addictive is that there's so many things you can manage and work on at once that it feels like there's almost no downtime or waiting around. If you're waiting for building materials, you can go do quests for an NPC to set up a trade route to speed things up. You can constantly micromanage your ships to colonize new islands. You can check the progress of your other islands and progress them further either aesthetically or in terms of functionality. It always feels like there's something you can do to contribute to the overall progress of your empire. Overall, I feel I've experienced enough enjoyment from the Anno 1800 beta to know that this is a game I will buy and probably sink a lot of hours into upon full release. This is definitely going to be my chill game when I just want to relax a bit. It's not often I get sponsorship offers to cover full AAA games such as this one, so a big shout out to Ubisoft for the opportunity and support of the channel. If you're a fan of city builders or just want a relaxing game to enjoy, then click the link in the description below to find out more about this game. Anno 1800 will also be an open beta from April 12th to April the 14th if you want to have the chance to try it for free before you consider buying it. But that's it for this video guys, as always let me know your thoughts on this game in the comments below if you've had the chance to play it. And also feel free to follow me on Instagram for real life stuff. Thanks for watching, I hope you all have a great day and I'll see you again really soon.